you like my tools? We are going to take a look at our conifers over here because I started without you guys. I got really excited and I just started to clip, 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 clip. It's kind of like when you're getting a haircut and you, you have really long hair and you're like, let's just take it all off. That's how I felt with uh, these conifers. So. It's like, like you're pretending like we would be any help to do Uh Yeah, but it's, it's interesting, right? So here, there's uh, this beautiful pine tree that we had here, but it was all congested. I mean, look at the, the haircut that we took off in the, in the base over here. This is primarily this tree. I, I took a stem off that uh, Acer palmatum too. So this yeah. was <laughs> one of those branches coming off. like that and you cut it. Yep. And now it looks like this. So the whole thing was. Oh, and look at this. So this was broken off. So I think what happened was the winter was really harsh on this tree and this had been broken off. It's probably one of the first things they took off. So this is a bad cut right here. I would have never cut that off. Um, the winter just kind of crushed it. The snow was laden on it and, um, and it was dying on this side and it wasn't getting any light. It wasn't getting any air. So we had to basically decongest this. And as Sonder was saying, like, look, like, you, you might have natural die off, but you have die off also because there's no sunlight getting to the trees. And so all the tips have the greens. But now I could actually get up in this, yeah, get up in this tree. Not that I want to be standing on it, but I was clipping the tree up here. And you could see that there's these little candles. These are the, the new parts of the conifer coming in. And you could clip those if you want to keep this short which we might, but I don't mind it actually growing another, another yay big this season. But I'd want to keep this short and manageable because if it gets too big, we're going to have trouble clipping it. Now I could see through the tree, which is great because you'll be able to see through to the landscape. And I think that's cool. It's almost like a craggy picture frame. You could see that this side though is a little denser than this side. And that's a problem because I feel like it's really off kilter but there's a, a bird's nest in this side, so I don't want to take too much off. I'll just be clipping on the inside and taking off some of this dead branches in here. You see this? Oh yeah. So this is, this and will give it- And that's never gonna grow back, is it? No, it won't grow back. And you know, li these little things, but I don't want to take too much off because there is a bird's nest and I'm not sure if the bird is using it or not. What's bothering me now, now that I've like rested a day, I'll show you, you could stay back there. Um, this branch right here, this one right here, because this is the shape. This beautiful shape right here is gorgeous. And this is beautiful. It's almost like a vase, but this one is just kind of like annoying. So if I move it down, what do you think? Does that look better if I move it down, if you imagine it gone? Yeah, it will definitely be a bit more balanced. You know, that arm is very long. Yeah. It does look strange, but. Yeah, so I think, because this is not the field of view, this is blocking that field of view. So you're never gonna look at it from this angle. You're gonna look at it from the back and from the forward. So I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna go on the other side so you can see what I'm doing. Any specific technique to? Yeah, I'm gonna cut it at an angle. So you can see I cut off all these at angles and they started to pitch out. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. Stuff, sap dripping. So this sap too. actually protects the cut. So when a pine tree um, loses a branch, it pitches out and any insect or fungus that would try to get in mm. is actually gets caught in the pitch. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it at so an it angle. Just sticks in there and then, then, it, then it dies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how it protects itself. Yeah. Cut this at an angle so when it rains, the rain just drips off of it. Okay, there you go. I 
Can we propagate this or is this, this is done? No, you could, you could actually take these uh, cuttings if you want. You can make little bonsais out of them. Oh, look, you could tiny, tiny end pieces. Yeah, so this is like kind of some of the growing tips, right? So you don't have to throw this away. No, you don't. You could actually like clip off these, something like that. I don't have like my, Ooh. my smaller pruners, but then you'd probably take these off, you know, cut these off here. These are too big, but I want to cut off my hand, but yeah, you'd like cut those off. Yeah, the bottom parts. The bottom parts, and then you'd put this in some potting medium, and um, yeah, if you want to, we're probably going to be wood chipping a lot of this, but if we we're set up for it, we had a little greenhouse, or you could put it in a plastic bag with opened a little bit so it doesn't rot out, and then you'd start uh, growing your, your cuttings that way. We could do the same thing with the Acer palmatums, but let's yeah. Let's see what the shape looks like. Yeah, let's step back now. This is where you're like, oh my God, I cut off too much. But I've been looking at this for a few days now and a couple days now. I like that better. So, and as you walk over here, it looks nice. You just, you eye it out. And that, that's what it is. It's like art in the landscape. I, I actually love these trees now. I, like I understand why he went and planted these kind of interesting shapes. And we get the benefit of, of them now in the landscape because they're older. You know, this one is gorgeous. I don't even know. But you see this one? See how it has a V on top? That's bad. So that's two liters right there. You have the main trunk and then splits it splits off. So what we're gonna need to do, I can't get up there. I need an orchard ladder. And again, this is, this is getting so high. If you want to prevent this from getting taller, you're gonna have to cut off some of the tops of that leader anyway. So we're gonna have to make a decision. Oh, so you're gonna choose one over the other? Yeah. Because it wants this to grow out. It wants to grow out this way. And, and it, you don't want that to happen because then it will make the tree look a little funky. So we have to decide what leader stays and what leader goes. Unless it looks like somebody, no. It's all these competing leaders. So we're gonna have to make that decision. And I went and you'll, you'll notice that I, um, I could actually even do better at trimming this off. Closer to the, the bark. But I did this yesterday. And then this one and this one and this one. And you know, all these little little guys. And I'm sure this had beautiful foliage on the ground, but it no longer has that. This one I did yesterday, this is not a conifer, but a lot of the conifers and the Acer palmatums get planted together. And now, now what's next is this one. This one's almost, this one's completely gone. Like we're gonna have to pull that out with the maybe the UTV or we're gonna just have to you're gonna ask you to get your chainsaw and just cut it off at the base. I mean this one's so messy. It only has some green on the top and um, it's all look all this congestion here in the middle and all this dead stuff. So I could maybe clip all these off and see the structure and we could see whether it's beautiful enough. And if it's not, we might have to take it down. Um, I'll check if there's any bird's nests in there. And then this one, I started cutting this one off <laughs> and getting very trim happy. But then I was like, no, no, wait, we'll fit it in a video. Um, but you could see I started in here and you could see that it start, you could start seeing into it and all this stuff I wanna take off. And again, it looks kind of congested and messy. And I think some of this, this tree will start to get new life and light into it and uh, could look a little bit more interesting in the landscape. And then this guy looks pretty good. I like how it's cute. It's got a lot of new growth. You see all this like bright green uh, new growth on it, but all of this, is again really dead and it's not gonna come back. 
so we can maybe shape it. I, this one actually, naturally, I don't love the ones that have the gold growth. I think it looks a little chlorotic to me. Beautiful bark though. So I think I started to cut some of this off. You could see that it was broken as well here. It's too much weight. Too much weight. The snow was so heavy this winter. It, it just couldn't handle it. So I'll probably leave this one for now and work with the shape. And then as you can see, this, it's gotta go. We gotta cut it out. This one, you could even see the ball. I, I, I think the root ball was not really well placed in the environment. So a lot of these conifers, you got to assess the conditions that you're growing in. Um, you know, this is a really wet area. It's very clay. So they might have amended the soil here a bit. But if we free this up, if we just come in there and cut all these down and then allow the healthy plants to grow and to spread, then I think we're gonna be in a, a better position and it will feel like we could see through the landscape. These will feel like they could breathe a bit more. If we want to do more conifer plantings, I think we'd, we'd stay with like dwarf, dwarf varieties that, that you could keep you know, quite tiny in the landscape. But I'd like to actually see more perennial borders planted in with the conifers, so it's not all like conifers, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that covers up some of the bottom emptiness as well. Yeah. Exactly. Although you might want to see some of the, the stems. I think that's part of the, the charm of it is the bark actually looks striking. And in some cases you might, you might just want to have a very low ground cover underneath. Like the daffodils, I think even take away the color and the, the structure of the, of the plants. So I, I'm not crazy about daffodils. <laughs> so um, we might pop some of those daffodils out and maybe put them elsewhere. But I think this is, uh, this is gonna be a nice little project for me, for me today. All right, so I'm gonna start on this tree behind me. I started the other day, but this is uh, one of the blue spruces. I have these little shears, my um, Felco blade, and then some pruners printing shears right here. That's pretty much what I'm gonna work with. So I'm gonna go in on it. are pretty large here too so what we're going to do is remove all these trees there's probably less likelihood that there's going to be any bird's nests in here we'll kind of start this whole area over again and then maybe tomorrow i'll kind of take off that other uh stem over there it's going to be easier to do it with a um with a chainsaw but i also don't want to disturb 
the mama birds and the baby birds like I was doing today. Oh yeah. There's a lot of tension on that tree too, so. So we've made quite a bit of progress over here. Sonder and Joey, and even I helped out a little bit, <laughs> taking out some of these old conifers that just died. I mean, I don't know if they're at the end of their life, if they had a really bad winter, because we did have a long and hard winter. But some of them, we're actually quite congested, and you may not even recognize this one, but it has a really beautiful shape. And what we started to do was just begin cutting away at some of these old branches. I still want to actually come in here and do... Yeah, I know, I think... Nice. I think this needs a little WD-40. <laughs> it's very squeaky. I know, we've been putting this to work. I know, okay, so we'll probably use the other one. But this is like super congested still in here. And what I was noticing when I was actually pruning it was that it actually had some uh, sooty mold in there because there's no airflow moving through the conifer. It's just like super congested with not only new growth, but also a lot of old growth. So if you look under here, it'll probably be a little dark. Um, you have all this old stuff where all the needles fall. And it's not really doing the tree any favors. You might find some with a little bit of green tips, but most of these do not have green tips. And I just wanna go slowly when I prune this because I actually, we've found a ton of bird's nests in these conifers. You know, from a bird's perspective, this is a really nice tree to put your nest in because it's very well project protected and it's very congested. So there's not gonna be any creatures that come and try to take your little babies. But uh, so we went over into this, this tree. There's a nest in there. I just checked the, the fledglings are out of their nest. But if you peek your head in through here, you'll see that there's a little robin's nest in there. But the babies have fledged. And over here, we were debating whether we wanted to take this one out because it doesn't have a glorious shape and it doesn't have a lot of living material on it, but I noticed another congested area here and it's really just a, a nest full of baby birds, really baby birds, not even fledglings yet. So probably in the fall or winter when the baby birds are gone and nobody has a nest in that tree, we'll probably end up taking it out. And then the one I'm most proud of, and this is the one I really started on, is this one. And 
I'll have to see if we have an old picture of it because <laughs> I got really prune happy with this one. Um, this was severely congested and now it's so stunning. I love looking through all of these and being able to see through to the landscape. And what I'm thinking now with these is actually just creating little island plantings. So instead of having this full berm here planted, uh, just taking little bits and having walkways through them so you could really enjoy the specimens. And I think that's what's really they've become is after the pruning, it's almost like a bonsai in the landscape, which is really nice. There's ones that I don't like really love. Uh, like this one, it has this kind of like gold color to it, which is something that people select for. You see any of this dead stuff, I would just take off like this and clip it off. And so I would just come in here and clean this up. You could, you could be here for days and days, just like cleaning up these branches. But I liked, I liked the fact that it looked a little windswept. It kind of reminded me something like it, you would see on like a seaside or seashore. But what I'm going to do is actually plant, do a planting behind this, probably using more um, deciduous flowering shrubs. So it, it gives a little balance. So it's not all, it's not all conifers. And from this side, it looks good. You don't notice that it's... Yeah, this is like the main viewing angle. I think, you know, from here. And I, I do, that globosa right there, that, um, I think that's a Picea pungens globosa. I'll double check, but that blue one in the middle, I still wanna be able to see through it. It's still congested, but again, baby birds take precedence. So I'm not going to, to do much snipping until I know everything has fledged. And sometimes mama birds will have a second clutch during the season and then You'll see this uh, pine over here. You know, I bet when he planted these, the box was a, a ton uh, smaller. So I trimmed it a little bit, but you could see that this pine is moving into this box's space. And I cut off a lot of branches. Unfortunately, we had a situation where we had two branches coming out this way and um, a bear pulled down the bird feeders and actually broke those branches off. So we'll probably end up planting a smaller shrub here because those branches are not going to come back. But you could see here on these pines, they have these candles and this is where all the new needle-like leaves are gonna come up. Now, if you don't want all those new leaves coming up, then you could just snip them like that. Little half snip. What? Yeah. Okay. Just, just a little bit like this. Now, is that gonna stop the? This is gonna stop the growth. But. It's gonna stop the growth for the for the new year, but not all the growth. Right. If you cut down here where there's no needles, then it'll completely stop the growth. So you don't want to oh, okay. go down below the needles. You want to go usually halfway, or you could cut off until there's just like one. Okay. And I think you know we might want to do that or think about doing that. We'll probably need a little uh, more of an orchard ladder, but. This is gonna be very unmanageable and it's going to break up our view all season long. So you might wanna actually cut off some of those candles and you'll notice in the distance, many of those cultivars of conifers have a more rounded or flat top edge. They don't have leaders except for that blue one in the distance. You can see it has two leaders. So we'll have to actually, uh, and leaders are the, the uppermost branches and you'll see that one is kind of bifurcating. That's bad. So we'll need to actually cut off one of those. Why is that bad? It's bad because the tree will start to, to um, go out in both directions. And uh, when it does that, it'll like, it won't know which direction to go. And it will look, it'll be one, it, it's, it's gonna reduce the ability for it to be strong and uh, it's going to look odd in the landscape. So what I'd probably do in looking at the, the leaders is I'd cut the right one off. Why? Because the left one looks a little straighter to me. And if we cut the right one off completely, I think the left will start to grow more vertical and will give that tree a better shape. This one, you could see that this is going to be the leader up here. And what I'd like to do is maybe get one of those telescoping uh, clippers, pruners, 
and prune off the tops of these to kind of make it a little bit more manageable so we're not like constantly reaching up there. And this, and this here, you know, do we want this to grow out completely? I don't think that's a problem. I think that's more of a, more of an issue, so. And then I'll show you one more conifer. I mean, there's tons of work to do here. So this is like a quick uh, conifer 101. And I do feel some raindrops, huh? This is another pine. So you'll see that this has candles too. This is more of a prostrate species. And look, if you see this one, this one lost its candles. So there's gonna be no new growth on, the, on these leaves, but all the rest have candles. So I'm not quite sure what happened to that one. It looks like maybe it got, mm, maybe some mold on it or whatever. But if you wanna keep this prostate and uh, prost, prostate, prostrate, not prostate, prostrate, uh, and you don't want it to get too high, then again, clip off some of those candles, just like that. And you could go lower, of course. And again, you're not cutting off all the new growth. You're just taming it a little bit. And if you wanted to create more undulations and have more topography, then you could do that by controlling the new growth and clipping the new growth. And then you'll also see some congestion here or some dead branches, so this is a great example. And needles don't last forever. They also have a lifespan, so if you see some things that might be getting shaded out or it just might have been at the end of its life. And if I pick this up, you could see in there that this is not as congested as some of the other ones that I've been cleaning up, but I could actually clear out all of these dead branches in there all the way to the, the base of the trunk. And that's going to give this plant a much neater and nicer shape. And again, allow for more airflow under there so it doesn't succumb to any type of molds or diseases. Speaking of airflow. Airflow is happening right now with this wind, which is good because it's been stuffy for all week. Anyway, that's a little uh, pruning 101 and you know, I'm, I'm actually, I really enjoy this process. I haven't really ever had to prune my conifers, but we have so many neat and interesting varieties here that I am learning and I actually find this to be very therapeutic work. So that's it. Show you more progress as we go.